Uh, Ian, uh, I've been involved in a, in a past video game collecting documentary that uh, came out. It was a bits of yesterday. It came out like six, like five years ago. It came out before the pandemic. Didn't think much of it at the time. Um, I was exhausted when I filmed for it. I remember I was at Retropalooza and I was like, I was exhausted from 2016. Uh, my that's when I did my like 10 conventions like in 12 weeks mm -hmm. to sell the book thing you remember me I was yeah. miserable oh yeah you were you were absolutely it, it was a bad time for both of us Ian Ian had his bad his bad stuff happening medically yep I was miserable from running around <laughs> selling books and constantly traveling um so that came out I was like this is fine it, it, it's harmless it's fine it, it shows off people's collections you talk about some rare games it's fine this this other one came out that I knew about but I didn't really look into and it's called uh rarity Retro video game collecting in the modern era. It was released October 5th, 2021 here. And people started bringing it up more the past few weeks. Like, hey, Pat, you should look into this. This thing comes off as an advertisement for a certain grading company. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll look into this. I'll it's watch interesting. It. Uh, it's weird how it does because I, I know we're, you'll get into the notes further, but it's interesting to me because I'm going to be honest, there are some decent conversations in this documentary. Absolutely. There are definitely some decent conversations in this documentary. Uh, my, my friend Stefan, uh, Art Nintendo Power, your friend, has a, you know, a good segment where he's talking about art. And I thought there were a couple of people. Uh, Heidi, I don't remember her last name, had some good thoughts on collecting. And uh, Robert Komen in particular, Particular, I really liked a lot of the things he had I to love, say. I love Robert. I'd love to meet Robert, have a sandwich with him. I, 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 I really enjoyed the, the things he had to say on collecting. So don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to lump everyone who's in this together because, because I, it, it, there, there are good things in this, this documentary. I really enjoyed some of the stuff that I, I saw. Uh, Robert Coleman's thoughts on nostalgia were, were very healthy to me because I feel like in this, I, I'm it, people, listeners of the podcast, uh, are no stranger to my thoughts that I, I, I consider nostalgia, if I'm being uh, extreme, I can I, I call it nostalgia poison, uh, nostalgia poisoning, because it can permanently lock you into this bad thought. Uh, uh, this, this, this echo chamber of things were better than they used to. You don't look forward to the future. You spend so much time stuck in the past. Uh -huh. Robert Coleman had an interesting way of phrasing it, I thought. And nostalgia does not need to be that way because as he puts it, he's like, nostalgia is, is you know, uh, it, it's a way to hold on to a key memory without forgetting it. You have an object it's that reminds attached. you sure. it reminds you of a key memory and he's sure. like i think he says something like that's where nostalgia is good because it, it keeps you from forgetting some of these memories of your youth you get a fuller yeah. picture of yourself i actually have a note on here robert mirrors my experience of recollecting stuff from your past sure you remember and before i get into uh, any criticism i have i want to say that uh, this isn't you know don't go after any of the people involved in producing and directing this obviously or i'm gonna try to keep this separate but motivations oh, i will talk about so like, what i uh, what i think is weird by the about this just to, and i'm gonna let you go is that it's book ended by pretty good segments yes. and then right in the center it's just like out of nowhere it jumps into water commercial mode for about 20 25 minutes, minutes. 20 25, 25 minutes yeah we'll get into it but so don't go after any producers or directors but there is clearly a motivation here to paint graded game collecting and WADA games in particular as the next big thing. Get in early, even though by then it was too late, which we'll talk about. And I really wonder, Ian, I'm glad, first of all, I was glad, I, now I know, I'm not saying I have to be invited to participate in these, but you would not want to ask someone like me and Ian to participate in this. Because if you asked us about graded games and WADA, we would have told you what we thought, the things we said in the podcast for at that point, for about two and a half years at that point, where this seems fishy, we think this is a huge bubble, we think this is going to burst, which Robert does have a comment. He's the one that says, yeah, I don't think this is going to last. This could be a fad. You were right, Robert. You're absolutely right. Because by the time this came out, the bubble was starting to even burst later in 2021. Definitely by 2022, sure. it started going downhill, as, as we've covered. But... I really wonder what the collectors who participated in this thought upon watching it. And I'm not saying they have to publicly come out and condemn this or not, but if I was a collector and I was a participant in this and you asked me about how I got into collecting, nostalgia, inter interesting things in my collections, oh, this is what this documentary is about. And then I watch it and the literal middle, middle third of this or middle part of it is advertising graded games and WADA. I would be like, what the hell is going on here? 
It would not uh, have seemed so much like an advertisement if there was anyone t- looking at both sides or more than one company, but the brief mention of VGC, and granted, I know people don't like VGC, but it was like, let's trash VGC. Yes. Let's trash VGC. Then went into VGA. the dentist segment about um, <clears throat> went into the dentist segment about uh, you know collecting and everything he has is WADA, and then it literally goes into a WADA segment talking yes. about WADA games. So yeah, VGA Video Game uh, Rating Authority. VGA, sorry. Yeah. So there was literally a whole minute about this is why VGA sucks. This is why you should grade with WADA games instead. And at that point, I'm like, what the hell is going on? I mean, on that's here? an out. I mean, that's out, it was an advertisement. out advertisement. It was an advertisement. Yeah. The director, to his credit, admits that I've gotten into, at the beginning, he talks about it, then later on, I've gotten into Genesis collecting, then graded Genesis games he shows, and he has them in cases. And I'm like, what the hell is happening here? I'm not saying the director, <laughs> I'm not saying the director wanted to do this to pump the market, but if you told me that, I would be like, well, this is strange. What is going on here? So, I love the nostalgia segment. I love the, the last segment with, with our pal, our Nintendo, yeah. uh, Stefan, at the end, talking about all, all the one-off art pieces, Nintendo Power Letters, things like that, the little clay things that are great from the from photographing the yep. issue. That's amazing. Uh, that stuff. That really, uh, the console uh, variant guy. Uh, yes, that was uh, cool. In, in Europe, that was fantastic. That's getting into something interesting and different about, okay, we're preserving different things about game collecting. And I thought uh, uh, Heidi's streamer name had a really good conversation about why people would want the physical thing. Sure. It's like, you know, if you have spot, it, 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 I just, I like that because it echoed my sentiments exactly. It's the difference between having like Spotify and a record collection is the difference between having, you know, ROMs and emulators and it's having the real game. It's a process. Yeah. And the key point she pointed out um, that I love that I always mention is that when you have to go through this process, you are more likely to enjoy the whole thing. Sure. When I put on a record, and she mentions this too, and it's true, when I put on a record, I don't skip any tracks. It's more annoying to get up and move the needle if there's a song I don't really like. You listen to the whole record. When you hook up an NES and you pop a Nintendo cartridge in there, you're more likely to pay attention to that one game Correct. instead of being like, Oh, I died once at this level. I'm frustrated. I'm going to load something else. Your investment factor is different. Yeah, there, there were some segments in it that really yeah. kind of made collecting. Uh, there, you could understand why someone would collect. Sure, stuff. sure. Um, I wrote down lots of comments as you can see. Ian. I don't see. I don't. I don't have your comments uh, up in front of me. Uh, I've got. Yeah, I've got this list. Real quick, uh, just on a technical level. The lower third descriptions, when it say one's names, the text was super tiny. This is a little nitpick. I couldn't read, like, uh, I guess it was on a big screen. I could read, like, what the people were that were talking. Uh, the audio mix is off for a couple of the people. It's like it went stereo on some dialogue. That's a little nitpick thing. It's just a little mixing thing you can fix. Uh, That's all. Some other uh, little nitpick things. Uh, the fictional bits. That bothered me real quick. They would, th- they would have someone say something like, hey, when I woke up in the morning sometime, I've been thinking about a game. They would cut to a, a person acting in the oh. bed. I'm just like, that's not necessary for a documentary, but that's again, that's a little, that's a minor nitpick. That, that was sort of weird. Um, just some stuff. I noticed that a lot of collectors, even some of the ones that I did like in here, uh-huh. uh, th- they don't know what they have. Um, and, and some of the collectors obviously looked like they knew more, and maybe it was something they didn't really know about from like a system that they weren't as versed in. Sure. But like, uh, the, the dentist at one point, I can't remember what it is. I think it's the circle seal. He goes, yeah, I, uh, I got this. My buddy told me this was really rare. And it's like, <sighs> like you're outing yourself as yeah. having no knowledge about this in the documentary. And that should not, that should have been edited out. They should not have included. Yeah, no, they should not have included that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, if they, yeah. Cause that looks really, really bad. Um, I also, the other problem is this documentary just ends. It literally goes from our Nintendo, uh, coll- uh collection to it's done. There's right. like no end cap. I'll get to this in a second. Uh, but what we're, I want to focus in on that bad part of the film because this this mars the entire film, obviously. It, it's a walking advertisement for it. So it talks about um, Dennis Kahn, the founder of, of, of Wada Games, um, how he was a collector since he was a little kid. Uh, he, he found the stadium events in, in the wild. They showed a VHS. Like someone took a home video of him saying, hey, I found all these games. I could sell these all for seven or $8,000. And when I see that, it's like when, when I found stuff in the wild, Ian, my first thought wasn't like, 
I can sell this and this is the amount. Sure, it's right. just this stuff is going in my collection now. Right. Yeah. I never called Ian at the swap meet. Hey, Ian, I found a bag of games of Turbo Graphics games. I can sell this all for several hundred dollars. So it was super weird and it sort of told on, on itself there. And but that segued into the grading game section, which was collectors revel. It was called Collectors Revolution, this section, Ian. Revolution. Did you I, pick up on that? I think I missed that. I'll be honest with you. <laughs> but isn't that kind of you're sort of painting a brush on about this is the next big thing, revolution. Sure. Yes. So uh, there's some weird quotes in here. They did admit WADA has control of the market due to relationship with heritage auctions. So that was the only time in that section where they really hit upon the relationship between the people involved, the players like Jim Hopper and that owns mm -hmm. heritage auctions. And wow, why do you think they have a relationship with WADA even before they were established? Uh, now, it's a blink and you miss it's it. It's a blink and you miss it. Um, this, this quote bothered me from nes complex chris this is nothing this is nothing personal i don't want you to take this wrong way oh, i've met the guy i like uh, the guy but I, yeah I, I i meet him at the conventions but i do uh, have a comment on it he said grading games is doing history a favor how, how, how is it doing history a favor by by grading a game well and he wasn't the only person to say that the comment i was going to comment on was just the one where he's like everyone wants these you know uh, oh, sure and no offense but it's just like I am in the position where I don't understand genuinely how anyone wants to collect sealed games. You're in the position where you understand that people want to collect sealed games, but I, it's nothing is definite. I am not jealous of these games. Uh, I just, I, like I said, it's, it's what it's, it's diff People want different shit out of collecting. Sure. And I, you know, there are lots of people who don't want that stuff. It was always a defense on Nintendo age. I brought before, Hey, you're jealous of this shit. I was like, do you know how much money I've spent on games? It's a crutch to, to, to bring up the jealousy. Do you know how much money I've spent on games in 25 years where I can afford uh, some of this stuff? Trust me, I've spent a, a lot of money on games. So, but going back to the grading games is doing history of favor. It's a conflation, Ian, of grading with preservation. Oh, yeah, and that wasn't, he wasn't the only person who said it. It was, sure. preservation is not. Is not slabbing. Grading games uh, and slabbing them is not preservation. Preservation no. is. Uh, dumping the ROMs and scanning the box art. It's 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 what places like Gaming Alexandria do with their sure. current with their current project where they are literally scanning every box, every manual, every cartridge, front, back, all pages for Famicom games. That's preservation. But even if you make the argument, Ian, that hey, this physically preserves it, you can buy protectors that and not grade the well, game. And also that are airtight. There is a UV. lot. To there's a lot to be said. Uh, uh, Andrew Borman from the uh, the uh, Museum of Play, uh, Kelsey from the Video Game History Foundation. There is importance to being able to experience it all as it was, but you cannot do that if it's slapped. Yes, you can't. The, the original experience wasn't this game is sealed. The original experience was opening the game, putting it in a, in a in an in NES on a CRT and playing it. That's the experience. You can you can preserve game history by making sure all the games are backed up and all the re uh, related art is safe. Sure. You can also preserve game history by being able to provide a way to play them the way they were meant to be played, like they will do at the Museum of Play. If you're a researcher and you go and you want to research, they have everything there so you can set it up. But the key is preservation. It, it's the experience and the data and the art. Putting it in a, a box preserves nothing. In fact, you can't even preserve the experience that way because you can't use it. Sure. So I, and like I, said, I do understand that some people would want a slab game to put on the shelf. There's a couple that I would have, sure. but it's Back not. It's I wouldn't call it. I, I wouldn't call it preservation. No, it's not. It's not preservation. That's different. Uh, then the water ad starts about 35 minutes in. Uh, they they said um, provides confidence to buyers. They bring up counterfeits, preventing counterfeits. I I literally wrote down LOL because obviously counterfeits have gotten through the system. Legitimize and elevate video game collecting elevate it video game collecting has been pretty big it's made mainstream news which we'll get into later in the podcast way before wada started great grading games sure that's in, that's sort of insulting i think to some longtime collectors knocking down barriers to allow more people to come in get in early what you're doing is creating an ecosystem for for rich people to to speculate that's that's your barriers like hey it's legitimate we have grades on this now they could have bought these rare games and even these sealed games before wada games existed sure you created what you created was an artificial ecosystem to boost the price up 
That's all that was. And then they come to my my absolute favorite segment, Ian, at 38-24 in, The Dentist. Eric Nyerman, who talks unanswered for four and a half minutes. I clocked it. Four and a half minutes of a guy who created an LLC and got investor friends and neighbors to buy these games. That the, 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 the collector we never heard of before that weird article because he wasn't collecting games. Says avid video game collector. This was a person on camera, on YouTube, on live streams, literally saying, I had no idea video game collecting was a thing before Heritage Auctions and Water Games uh, blew sure. it up. Always been a collector my entire life. You should have fucking specified of what, because it wasn't the video games. They showed him with baseball cards, other shit. Yeah. Should have specified this guy came in the last year or two. And this is where this really bothered me. There was absolutely no pushback into any of this information being peddled. At this point, favorite quote ever. We both wrote this down. The seal provides organic rarity. I needed. I I, I yelled after the second time he said it, and then he proceeded to sell to say it like three or four more times. Organic rarity. Is there such a fucking thing as organic rarity? What the hell are we talking about here? What the hell? He talks about how he's turned down. It turns on offers for hundreds of thousands of dollars. No verification of that stuff actually happening. But saying, hey, yeah, I spent $100,000. I turned down 500000 Sure, why not? We'll take your word for it. Pump up your own market, Eric. Go ahead. Sure. Pump up the volume. That's pump fine. Up the volume. Pump up the volume. He says, we prefer, I prefer water grading over VGA. Straight up advertisement at that point. Why wasn't someone from VGA contacted to be like, hey, we thought we did a cool thing. It didn't exist back in the late 2000, 2010. If you're going to talk about collecting and rarity and graded video games, you got to have all the uh, the players, all the players. DJ was the was the OG for for like that nine ten years. And at that one. point in time, I think it was probably already announced that CGC was going to get involved. Like getting getting yes. getting a blurb from all these people absolutely would have been it, it. It actually would have made it a more interesting documentary too, because I'd like to know what all three of them think the future is of and, this and what their what their strategies were and yeah. how they viewed things. That would be in, I, like I honestly is every day that goes by video video game collecting grows more and more tiresome like the big collections and stuff to deal with it's not like super fun for me um i wasn't looking forward to this going in not because of any i didn't really know anything going sure. in i just it's not really the th i know about collecting it's not what I, sure. I needed to be educated on but that would have been an interesting thing sure. i would have found that interesting maybe how like for example like cgc has been in comics rating for decades how they yeah, apply like, that knowledge over they're yes. not a startup like wada was give me you know? give me a little info on what each of these uh, grading companies thinks and what they're doing Wada speaks to me as a collector. I almost threw up when I heard that quote from Eric. They speak to you as a collector. And then the mantra, mm -hmm. this is in quotes, mantra of jealousy that games are meant to be played. Mantra of jealousy. I love it. I fucking love it. And then what you talked about before, right after that, was NES Complex saying that the truth is every gamer wants them. People that are serious collectors wish they can get them. Uh, there is some. I disagree wholeheartedly. There is some jealousy. I know that I have it, Chris. I'm not judging you if you're jealous of people having steel games. We don't have that same jealousy. We we don't. I, I don't know how I can convince you of that. Um, well, I, just like I can never I, convince someone that there's no reason. I, like it, 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 one, yeah, whatever. Then there's then there's a six minutes straight about Dennis Khan to paint him as a nice guy, and. <sighs> This was on the tail end. This was like right. It was weird because this came out. This documentary came out a month after Carl's video. It was roughly a month after Carl's video. Just so crazy. Just thinking about the timing, the timing, and how so, long it's been. So I don't know what was inserted, but you had one guy in the hat bring up a death threat against Dennis Khan. And this is what I'm going to say about bringing up death threats like that. And this is why you don't do it. There's two reasons you don't do it. One, you don't want to leg legitimize like assholes acting on the fringe by acknowledging them. Uh, that's what experts say, never to acknowledge this shit that happens. But second, what you're doing is trying to uh, paint people with legitimate criticisms about water games in the same light as we belong in that group as people setting down. Right, you can't lump them all together. And I thought that was, I don't want it to say despicable, but I knew what was happening with that being included. I don't appreciate that. I really don't appreciate things like that being included. Um, so it was literally six minutes of, of Dennis walking through his stuff. And then people were saying that 
It's a misconception that Dennis is sitting back collecting money from Wada and never was a collector. I don't understand why why that that sentence fried my brain because you can be a collector and still make tons of money off your business venture. And I. I would honestly prefer if Dennis wasn't a collector because he has a vested interest then because WADA increases the values of the games in his collection. He owns tons of sealed games. Right. Ian, I never brought this up before. Now it's perfect time. The Overstreet Guide to Collecting <laughs> Games. Mm -hmm. It's a fine little thing by Carrie Wood. You know what the back of this is? An advertisement. Is your collection for sale? We'll find you a great home. From Dennis Khan, looking to buy out your collection. Buy as much as you can. This is before water uh, games existed. This stuff is all interconnected. It's Wada, all a wild web. Water games made Dennis Khan and his friends instantly richer by what they had in their collection. You can't deny that. The values went through the fucking roof. Oh, yeah. Come on, people. You're killing me here. I'm not, we're not fucking Sherlock Holmes here. This stuff is out in the open with this stuff. Anyway, that's all I got to say about that. Segment. Anyway, anyway, where is it? I almost hit the I'm a shill thing. Anyway, um, I love the section real quick. I didn't hate all of this. I love the section about the rental stickers on games because I love yep. keeping rental stickers. Someone had a chiller that was a rental version. Yep. I have a clamshell a chiller rental. Remember, the, the, remember I had to buy it because the, the original game didn't work in the, for, for the NES Marathon. It was mm -hmm. glitchy. Yeah. So I bought the replacement that had the clamshell. It was a rental. That's right. You did. Um, Talking about the Bible games, how uh, uh, Chris said, oh, I remember seeing at a Christian store. That's cool stuff. This is what I like to see. When well, the segment of this, Ian, what would I want to see in the future? In an actual, like, I already said that. by what I would want to see. I, I want to see like the. I want. I want. I want to see um, interviews with all three of the grading companies. But in general, what would you want to see? Is there, like if, if you if you can do well, no, that, that's what I would want to see. I, I would want to see something more 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 open. Okay, this is what I want to see. I want it to, I want a documentary to focus on the evolution of game collecting going back to the 80s. Sure. Like back then, what people were honestly doing were like, hey, there's an old game that I want to uh, find out or buy. They literally had to like put out classified ads in like computer gaming and, you know, mag mm -hmm. like, hey, help me, I'll buy your games. How that evolved, that, we're talking about the first run of collectors, people like people at, uh, at the Video Game History Museum, like, uh, like Joe Santulli. And Sean Kelly and people, people like that. These were the people that really started compiling this stuff and how mm -hmm. that evolved to archiving, preservation, like how you make that steps, like talking to Frank, it's like at what point did you make that leap? You know what I mean? Like right. at, one, at some point you had to make a leap. Mm -hmm. Yeah, things like that. How about someone talk to Mike, Mike Etler? Mike Etler was, was super important documenting all the NES games in the 90s. Sure. Uh, he, he's like sort of full on the radar. I want to talk to these people. Because yeah. that's when there was nothing to go off of. Me and Ian are, are, you know, standing on the, you say, standing on the shoulders of giants. Like, they established a foundation, these people in the 80s and 90s. Oh, yeah. For Absolutely. everyone else to sort of jump in at some point. That's what I want to see. So I'm sorry if I ruffled any feathers with the criticism, but that, especially since that documentary, the timing of that documentary was so bad in terms Things of... Things have changed a lot. The, the bottom has fallen out of the market of great again. It's really interesting uh, to see like the difference, the, the differences between what was like, if you made that documentary just a year later, what would be being said? Six, seven months later, even if it came out, I think people would be like, what are you doing? The bottom's already fallen out. Sure. You know, it was bad in terms of the timing. That's all I got to say about that.